in that way. It's just the way the game is now. Yeah, absolutely. And John Lowe is my old friend who did uh, create the stat, and he was also very close to Tom Kelly. And, you know, you could hear it when Tom Kelly talked about pitching. He His, his compliment, you know, now unless it was Jack Morris pitching 10 innings in Game 7 where he deserved a higher compliment, usually TK had one or two responses to how the pitch, starting pitcher did. Either he gave us a chance or he didn't give us a chance. And, start, right. and qu- quality starts give you a chance. Uh, want to thank Tony. They absolutely Hogan. do. They, they, and I'll I'll just add it's it's especially notable when you can hit the way the Twins can hit, right? So right. I mean it's um you know a 4.5 ERA which is uh what 6 innings and 3 runs is over a, the course of 9 uh is it, it doesn't sound that great, but when uh when you you think that most teams the the over under is four. You score more than four runs, you generally win. You score four or fewer, then the, the statistics don't you know it deteriorate from there. And so you know someone consistently giving you five and two thirds with two runs or six innings with three runs or whatever whatever it is on a on a good offensive team it, you know gives you gives you a chance. It doesn't make people feel as good about postseason opportunity. And I know that's a lot right. of what people are, are worried about right now. But, you know, for me, I'm, uh, my concern is let's just win the division and we'll worry about that other stuff later. Right. Thanks, Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D, your state farm agent, works out of Champlin, offers, offers financial services in addition to all, any kind of insurance you could want and handles my insurance. I've been very happy with him and so has Michael Russo on our staff. Hey, Minnesota sports fans. This is your local state farm agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all $700,000, you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowners insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763 763- 421-4900, or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. All right, uh, Miguel Sano uh, took a pitch off the elbow. He's not playing on Thursday. Uh, he has been a monster lately. The interesting thing to me, Roy, and I want to get the experts view on this, looks to, to me like he has become a monster mainly by punishing mistakes. He still isn't doing what I think we would both love to see him do, which is you know, take away the outside part of the plate from pitchers, drive to right center, and then, you know, get in the pitcher's head and react to that. He's doing this just by saying, you know, my swing is good enough. I'm You throw it in the wrong place, I'm just going to kill it. All true. Uh, that's exactly uh, what's happening. And I am guilty of being impatient with Miguel because he has so much strength and so much talent to hit. And I see a way for him a la Miguel Cabrera or Kirby Puckett or Jose Abreu or, you know, to, you know, to set up, to hit the ball from the just inside middle to the outside corner and and set up to right center. And, uh, and then just accept the fact that occasionally you're going to get beat on inside fastballs. Uh, And the reason I say occasionally, and the reason why I say that's the right way to hit is because if you're setting up, to hit that way, then every breaking ball strike that you get, you're going to punish, and you see breaking ball balls better earlier and better, and you and you lay off of you lay off of those, and the result is you hit closer to 300, and you drive in a, a boatload of runs and hit and hit home runs all over the ballpark, and and you become a, a truly uh, great uh, hitter. Um, the other reason why I say that is because. Yes, guys can get you out if you're hitting that way. And we've seen it with Abreu. We've seen it with Miguel Cabrera. If they can throw the ball in the inside corner or just inside of that, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get these guys out unless they, unless they adjust and start cheating on it every once in a while. But you're going to get them out. What they know is you can't throw it there enough times for a strike. <laughs> you just can't. And all it takes is one in there that I'm looking for and hit it in the left field seats, and they go right back out to the outside corner. They don't want to come in there again. So it, it, what Miguel is doing has always done is he just couldn't resist looking for the ball from the middle of the plate in, and and to hit that pitch you have to get the big end of the bat out in front, and he starts early and before he really recognizes the pitch, and he swings at bad balls, and his swing was long, and he and, you know he missed balls he should hit. So 
there are two different things going on right now. His, his mechanics were not great. They're much better now. And to your point, he goes up there and says, throw it in here, I'm swinging. And with, with that approach, with his new mechanics, if you throw it in the middle of the zone, it almost doesn't matter what pitch it is. If it's in the middle of the zone, he's going to have a pretty good swing at it and, and do, do some damage. Uh, he still is going to be vulnerable to uh, all the other things that you know I just talked about, but but he's getting better at that, better and better, little by little. He's taking more outside sliders. He's taking fastballs in and up. Every, little by little, he's uh, getting better and better. And if he never becomes, for a few years, a Miguel Cabrera-type hitter, but he just keeps making little strides, getting uh, better and better at being Miguel Sano, it's going to end up being pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And it has been. He's been one of the best hitters in baseball for the last two months, basically since that 0 for 7 game uh, and where everyone wanted to, to fire him. He has been one of the best sluggers in baseball and results matter. You know, we can we can talk about approach and, and technique and everything else and mentality, but He's hitting the ball hard enough, often enough, to be very valuable. Uh, let's uh, thank Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, the Bite Squad app. Promo code TalkNorth gets you your first delivery fee waived. Keep using them after that. These are a great company. They've been great with our network, uh, and they have grow up, keep they keep on growing. Uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, snacks. You can order ice cream from them. They will deliver it. It will be like everything else, like it just came out of the kitchen. Uh, and, you know, you save yourself all kinds of hassles. You don't have to do dishes. And they will deliver anywhere you happen to be. Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, the Bite Squad app. Now let's wrap up the show with, uh, you, know, you know, we're doing this on Thursday morning. Within a day or uh, a couple of days, Twins are going to have to make their, their decisions on who they want on the Major League roster who can be eligible for the postseason. And Gratterall and Alcala are, you know, they're blowing away AAA hitters right now. What's your view of what the Twins should do and whether pitchers that young and inexperienced can, can, can come up and actually make a difference in either a pennant race or in a postseason? You know, I don't have a strong opinion because I don't, I, don't really, I don't really know. I've seen guys, um, you know, come up and throw 99 and just get their lunch um, in, in yep. the big leagues. And, and I, so the fact that somebody can throw 100 miles an hour is intriguing, and it's worthy of saying this guy's a real prospect. But uh, for a, a guy to uh, you know start in uh, single A, go to double A, go to triple A, you know, and and um, and then all of a sudden you say, well, he can help us in the big leagues. Well, maybe. And what they may do is is bring him up in and try to pitch him in in some uh, lower stress situations and and see because it'll take it'll take stress off the uh, off your regular bullpen guys. And you'll have more pitchers. The starters don't have to go as long, and they might they might be looking at some low stress situations just to see how he does. What it, because you don't know about his breaking stuff. You don't know about command. You don't. You, in the big leagues, you can't throw it. If you have one pitch, you can't throw it hard enough. And so, and you don't know what a guy's mental makeup is. It it looks like Gratterall, who has gotten more. Ink really that I've and I've talked with people about. Um, they seem to like his think his makeup's pretty good, but you don't know when you get to big leagues and they're in a pennant race. You just you just don't know, and you don't want somebody to uh, come up and get off to a real bad start in a in what's going to be probably a pretty good big league career. So we'll wait and see. They're going to bring they're going to bring pitchers up. There's no question. They'll have you know they'll probably have. You know, both are left-handers. You know, Smelser and and uh, Thorpe uh, to have some more left-handers in the bullpen before they get to uh, Taylor Rogers. Uh, those guys for for sure, um, and um, anybody else that they think might be able to help them in a, in a situation where that whether it's a guy they can run uh, or um, you know whatever whatever it might be, there'll be a, there'll be a bunch of guys here. No, oh, no question about it. Uh... And let's uh, hit on one more topic here. And, and it's really interesting. The the vocal fan always seems to just think of upside, right? Oh, you know, trade for Kimbrel, sign Kimbrel. You know, it's it's always just, hey, this is gonna if we do this, it's gonna be great. And what I just want to remind people, what general managers, team presidents, they have to worry about downside. And there might right. be upside in calling up Gratterall. 
there might have been upside in signing Kimbrell. But the downside is for someone like Gratterall or Alcala, they could come up here, get lit up, and it could it could knock them back a couple of years. Well, that's what, yeah, that's kind of my point. You really don't want that. Uh, you don't. You really don't want that happening. So I think they're going to be very judicious about about what they do with those guys. And your point is a great one. People assume, okay, this guy's throwing a hundred miles an hour and he's getting double A hitters out. Well. Okay, good. That's part of the progression. I think if you throw 100, you should get double, hit, double A hitters out. It doesn't directly translate to getting um, big league hitters out because I, I've, seen it, I've seen guys throwing 99 too much. Uh, Shagwa that was here, I mean, he came up throwing 98, 99 in Boston. It looked like he was sitting on a tee for the, for mm-hmm. the Boston hitters so, you know, when he first came up. So, um, it, it, I mean, we can, go, I, we can name a lot of names. Uh, that the Twins have had up here throwing minimum 97, and uh, you, they're, they're no longer heard from. So, you, you know, you have to be you have to be judicious about you know about that. And it it kind of goes it, it kind of goes along with you know what I was saying uh, earlier and, and about about being ready for the postseason. People are worried about that. My concern is for the starting pitching to you know to continue to to step up and be uh division winning uh, worthy and and get into playoffs as a as a division uh winner and people are upset that you know uh, that they don't have potentially world series uh, world series pitching staff remains to be seen we'll see whether it is or whether it isn't but i look at what they've done after the season that they had in 2018 and to be here where they did anybody expect this, you know, did anybody expect this much fun or this, this good. And you, you talk about upside or downside for, for a management team. Did they, did they know and should they have emptied their farm system in the, in the winter and gotten, you know, three a plus starting pitchers. I mean, cause, cause they knew, that this lineup was going to do what they did. I, you know, I don't know. I, I think where they are now, what they've done, given what the team did in 2018, uh, what they've done this year has been uh, nothing short of remarkable and a really big step in the right direction in terms of the progression of where they want to be as an organization. That was another topic I had at the breakfast club. I spoke up the other day. They asked, you know, they, they were pretty self-aware, smart people. They said, Hey, are Minnesota fans, you know, uh, are we the right kind of fans? It was something, some kind of question like that. And I said, well, you know, <laughs> it, the reality is that if you're a Viking fan and your paranoia is that that team's not going to win a Super Bowl and that's all you care about, well, you're not really on the wrong track, you know, but I would recommend, but most of the Vikings fans I know know how to enjoy the season. And then, hey, yeah, if they get beat in the postseason, oh, well, your, your fears were confirmed, but at least you had a good time. I find Twins fans to be the oddest fans in Minnesota because they allow any good regular season to not be a source of satisfaction or entertainment or joy. As soon as they realize a twins team is going to have a good regular season or has a chance to make the postseason, they immediately start worrying about how the team's going to lose in the postseason. And while the team's postseason uh, results in the two thousands justify that in a, in a scientific or a mathematical way, to me, baseball is a regular season sport. To me, you spend three months in the offseason gearing up for spring training. Spring training six weeks. The season goes six months where they play almost every day. To me, baseball is a regular season sport. You have to, And you have to go through a lot in the regular season to have any chance in the postseason. And to me, baseball postseason always contains luck. Uh, so I, don't, I just don't see the point in being a baseball fan – if your only reaction to a good team is going to be angst over how they're going to lose, and then, you know, uh, I guess anger when if if and when they do lose. Yeah, I, I see so many comments like, uh, "Doesn't really matter what they do if they don't if they don't win the World Series, it's going to be off or not." 
in in essence, that's you know, you get, there's ten or fifteen different kinds of ways to say that, but that's what they're saying. I mean, it's either win the World Series or go deep in the postseason, or I don't care about what they you know what they just did, and that's 